Welcome back. You are tuning in to Traders Nation. My pleasure to have back with us once again, Jim Bouchard. How to think like a black belt. Jim, welcome back to Traders Nation. How are you today? Hey, Kurt. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> good, good. Hey, Jim, listen. In times where some people may feel powerless, and, and they really, really do, unemployment, uh, not knowing where the next meal is going to come from, concerns, maybe they are employed and they're just nervous, they're not knowing if they're going to get the axe, <laughs> right, by a week's sure. end or whatever, how can one turn that around, bring power, Jim, power back into their lives and not, like, not feel like they're at the mercy of somebody else? Well, you know, Kirk, neither one of us are known for being exactly politically correct, right? Right. So here we go. Hit me, Jim. You know, no matter how tough it gets, as long as you breathe and you got a shot, right? Yeah. And the thing is, it all starts with it all starts with a decision. All right, knock down seven times, get up eight is an old adage from martial arts. Right. And it's true. I mean, you've been there, I've been there. Most of the people that are talking about this, you know, we've been there. We're not just, you know, singing platitudes. Right. Uh, you know, we're not preaching from the mountain. We've been down in the valley, too. So, sure. You know, there it is. You've got to pull up your pants. You've got to turn your hat around. You've got to get to work. Now, it's not easy. Right. You know, getting the black belt is simple. It's not easy. Right. And it starts with a decision. You've got to make the decision that you're going to do what it takes to get yourself back on your feet. Now, that requires a lot of tough decisions. Yeah. Some people don't want to look at some of these decisions. I was talking to somebody recently who lost a job, and... It was really facing moving a family. Mm -hmm. That's not an easy thing to do. Right. It really, really isn't. But when you sit down at the end of the day, you got to say, "Hey, is that is that really right now what's best for me and my family to get up and move?" Right. And it, you know, in that case, it probably was. All right. Not so always is, but you can't sit around waiting for solutions and waiting for you know waiting for someone to come and save you. So if someone's hit with challenges, they really need to confront the realities, don't they? And yeah, absolutely. Sit down and roadmap themselves to recovery, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, who, whoever, well, I suppose people have written the book, but I've not, <laughs> I've not seen the book that says, uh, you know, that life is supposed to be easy or things are supposed to be handed to us. Yeah. And these are challenging times. One thing I'd say, too, is, is right now there are a lot more people that are facing, you know, the, the proposition of maybe being laid off or downsized and whatnot. Yeah. And there's more to come. Don't wait around for the axe to fall. Right now, get yourself in gear, pull your pants up, turn your hat around, and get to work. Yeah, but and that yeah. means, you know, acquiring new skills, right. expanding the skill set that you have, sure. networking to find out where your next job is going to be or, yeah. or your next opportunity. Hey, you might find that you're going to make the move before the axe falls, and it's going to be something better for you. Yeah, but the government's going to take care of us, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> government's going to put gas in our tank, gold well, in our pockets. Hey, they're gonna they're gonna you know pay our mortgage for us. Why should we pull up our own bootstraps and take okay. responsibility for ourselves when when the government's gonna do it for us, Jim? You know, once again, that's one of the benefits of survival, I suppose. But <laughs> haven't you heard that before? I mean, we've heard this before. Yeah, this isn't new. I mean, you know, a lot of folks. I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of folks are running around right now saying, "Oh, you know, this is different. This is this is something new." No, it's not. We've heard this before. We've been in this situation before. Yeah. In fact, some folks have had it worse. I was talking to somebody recently about, you know, someone who had lived through the Depression. Yeah. Oh, they're, man. They're kind of laughing at this. They're saying, hey, yeah, we've got it real tough. you still got your cable TV. you still got your cell phone, right? Yeah. I'm, yeah, that's exactly right. My dad lived through the Depression. He's still alive with us. He's 89 years old. And uh, one thing that just, you know, before the whole crash kind of hit, right. my dad says to me, Jim, he says, he says I'm going to take some money out of the bank. Mm -hmm. Right? And he and he saw it. And right there, okay, all right, Dad, all right, and we're okay, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take some money out of the bank, and um, and sure enough, the people from that lived, survived from that depression, still mm -hmm. alive today. They know it. They're still stung by it. Right. And right. I don't know. Are we gonna come out of this with that same type of that level of sting to where we now find discipline? Because isn't that what it takes, Jim? takes discipline to pull our own bootstraps up and to find our own way out of that, that hole. No, exactly. And you know, my first book, Dynamic Components of Personal Power, when yeah. people ask me, you know, what's the most important component? It, it's discipline. Right. And discipline is a decision. Absolutely, it's a decision. You know, we can make it more complicated, but we don't have to. Right. You've got to decide you're going to do that. And let's face it, and hey, I, again, I'm not preaching from the mountain. I've done it. I've made the mistakes. Sure. You know, and I've paid for it. All right. We were not very disciplined our generation. Uh, we we really bought into the sales pitch for that easy credit thing. Right. Oh. You know, we got in we got into it over our heads. Sure. 
and we're paying for it now. Right. Um, but the trick is, again, it, it doesn't matter where we were. What matters is what resources we have here and now. And I should say, you know, I'm not diminishing uh, people's hardships either. Even though we live in a much different time and we have different circumstances and sure. conditions than the people did in the Depression. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's more uh, fail safes right now. Right. But hey. still, yeah, hey, when you're facing the prospect of losing your house, that's serious business. It was okay. so bad that's during it. the. That's right. It was so bad during the depression that if when you had to, when you had to right. use the car, mm -hmm. you would first start the car with kerosene because it was cheaper than the four cent gas or whatever the car yeah. was yeah. to use to, just to start the car, let alone drive it anywhere. Unbelievable. All right. right, you know, and I, I so admire it. There's been some folks that have really, you know, hit hard times and have made some adjustments. I was watching a story about some folks that uh, really just scrambled, right. did a personal downsizing, sold the house, or, or they had just lost, lost the house and they were able to put enough cash to, to get a, a camper or something, right. and then they hit the road. And I'll tell you what, more power to them because they're out there looking for work now. Sure. They, they made the adjustments, not easy, but they made the adjustments and needed to take care of their family. But you know, thank goodness some of these folks have, have nice campers instead of the tin shacks that people lived in. in the I mean, bottom line is, folks, bottom line is don't wait for the government to do anything for you. Good, <laughs> good luck. They're still trying to rebuild Katrina. That should be a good example. Don't wait for the government. Pull up your own bootstraps. Get, get disciplined. Now let's talk about discipline. You need discipline. You need focus and motivation if you're going to find excellence, at least in a recovery. Sounds like you read the book. <laughs> I, I, I've done my research. I have read it, Jim. It's an excellent book, by the way. So well, isn't that true? That. Isn't that true? Focus and motivation. You can have discipline, but you need to be focused to where you're going and the motivation to get you there, Jim. Yeah, exactly. Make a plan. And most of all, you know, and I know this is tough. Again, I've been there. Uh, what I learned about gratitude is when I was in my deepest moments of poverty. Yeah. And gratitude is the key to getting all this stuff in motion. Right. right. It's a matter of sitting down, and again, I'm not talking about gratitude as a platter. I'm not the nicey, nicey motivational guy, right? Yeah, no, no rah-rah here, Jim. Exactly, exactly. What it is is just sitting down and taking a good hard look at the resources you have emotionally, yeah. spiritually, and materially, because that's what you have to work with right now, and that's what's going to get you out of the mess. Even though it may be scarce, if you just have a, you know, take a look at it and be thankful for what you do have, particularly your skills, your talents, your abilities, Right. Nobody can take those away from you. All right, now, that may be all you have to get started again. Let's talk, let's talk about your program, Black Belt Mindset. Does it right. help others to achieve these new levels of performance, success, personally, and maybe even professionally? Oh, absolutely professionally. Okay. All right. So Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And I'm doing a lot of speaking right now in, you know, for conferences and corporations and whatnot. And the, you know, the whole idea is this. If everybody in your organization thinks like a black belt, right. if everybody's focused on optimum, optimum performance for themselves first, sure. right, and then as part of the organization, then your organization becomes more productive, ultimately more profitable. Yeah. Uh, but really what, to, what we're talking about is each individual in the organization focused on personal success. Yeah. And let's adjust that as well, because part of the reason we're in this problem is Success, success models became who had the McMansion right. or the $8 million yacht. Right. Success is having enough. It's taking care of yourself, having enough emotionally, spiritually, and materially. Now, that can be the, the multi-million dollar yacht. That's fine. If that's what you want, I won't judge it. Right. But it doesn't need to be. Right. What it needs to be is enough to make you happy, sure. enough to give you a sense of security. Right. And everything else is gravy, and we really lost sight of that. But anyway, yeah, it's about getting getting people to get back and focus on those basic core values that we seem to have lost in our culture. I like Big it. Big one, and I know we use dirty language when we're talking together is personal responsibility, right? Sure, sure. Now, we got about a minute left. How do you take somebody that's a white belt, turn them into a black belt? You just hit it right on the head. We've got to start with discipline. Yeah. And the secret, the secret of the martial arts, the secret to success in life as well, is to me, is practice, right? Yeah. We've got to develop a game plan. We've got to decide that we're going to do what it takes to get there. That's the discipline part. Sure. And then every day we've got to get up, pull up those pants, turn the hat around, and practice it. That's, you know, big secret, right? Yeah, every day. Jim Bouchard is with us today. How to think like a black belt. How to think like a black belt. Jim, where can we find you at? You can find me at jimbouchard.org. Yeah. That's J-I-M-B-O-U-C-H-A-R-D. Dot org. And, of course, you can find me on the Kurt Shemmer Show. <laughs> <laughs> nice, right here on Trader's Nation. Jim yeah, Bouchard.org. Jim Bouchard.org. Jim, thanks for your time today. Appreciate it. We'll be right back.